The Forum for Service Delivery was established in 2016 and made its political debut in the municipal elections and won many seats. Now the party launched its manifesto in the Ditsomo a local municipality in the northwest province close to Lechtenberg in March. Uh, although it has councillors in a few northwest municipalities, it is not represented in the national and provincial legislature. Now the F4SD maintains its founding commitment of dealing with water sanitation and education challenges amongst others in the county. Hi to Dumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we're joined in studio by Nongo Solo, who is the Commissar for the Student Forum for Service Delivery Political Party. And she's here to talk to us about the party's readiness ahead of the elections and a whole lot of issues uh, that are, you know, affecting young people in this country. Nongo, much appreciated for joining us on the show. Welcome. No, thanks a lot. We are humbled to be here. Greetings to you and your listeners. Much appreciated. I mean, um, you know, maybe if we can start the conversation by just looking at, uh, you know, the party itself. And, uh, you know, I mean, you were founded in back in 2016. Yes. Uh, maybe we can take the viewers uh, into, you know, what you stand for yes. as a party, just in general, before we get into some of the issues. So we are a grassroots organization. Um, if you will check your information, you'll discover that Forum for Service Delivery did, was not established firstly as a political party, but it had to be then because of our constitution in South Africa, yeah. had to con um, convert to being a political party because it wanted to contest national elections. But it started as a civic organization, and it's the only organization that actually followed up on an independent candidate, because you would understand that the constitution before it was not inclusive of independent candidates. So we did well, you'll, you'll know that in 2016, we managed to get the one council seat and we improved um, come 2021. And we actually, after by-elections uh, in December, we are running the municipality of Lichtenberg under mayorship through coalition with other, uh, other parties. So we are a growing uh, organization. We are patient with ourselves, but definitely we must make a mark mm. this year entering parliament. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, let's talk about uh, those strides that you've made uh, back in 2016. Uh, you know, when you entered local government, I mean, as you're saying that now you are at the helm at uh, one of those, uh, one of the municipalities that the Lachtenberg municipality, I mean, let's talk about some of the changes that uh, you had to bring in that municipality. I think we always speak of basics as an organization, uh, things that were given before even a human being was created. Water has been there yeah. before a human being was created. Land has been there before a human being was created. Energy has been there before a human being was created. And so when we got to Dito Bortla and we took over mayorship, one of the basic things of water was not even supplied by the ANC-led government for years, which is something that's available for free. All they have to do is to facilitate its process, clean the water, and supply it to the citizens and the commuters of the Dawatla. And that's one of the things that we've made great strides on. You, if you can get there and just interview anyone mm -hmm. and say, how is the water supply now? You will get a testimony that there is high improvement on water supply, sanitation, and all the basic needs, roads, infrastructure that we are improving. Because as much as we are leading at local level, we have influence uh, through governmental structures in the province. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm interested in finding out, I mean, I, I've been reading quite a lot of articles about you, that uh, you're actually working with different parties now as we are heading sure. to the elections on the 29th. Maybe let's talk about that, your reasons into, uh, you know, um, being in possible coalitions with, uh, you know, other parties and also uh, which provinces, also which municipalities are you targeting? I mean. Let's, let's say provinces because we are heading to the sure. uh, provincial and national elections. Now, are you targeting specific provinces, uh, the Northwest province in state, I mean, in, 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 for instance, and also other provinces as we are heading to these elections? Coalition is inevitable. It's definitely something that will happen after mm. uh, 29 May because we are all hoping that no party will win. Parties must start to negotiate and talk to each other. So unity is very important, and we are the first organization to show the importance of unity as a young organization. Yeah. Because as I'm speaking to you now, um, 2021, independent candidates got close to half a million votes. That tells you that they are the fourth or third opposition after DA and AFF. So people are saying, 
they, they want change, but they don't have alternatives. And Forum for Service Delivery took time in engaging those independent candidates. So that simply tells you that those votes that were going to independent ca candidates are coming to us. But also, we, are talking, we have spoken with other political parties in, in Limpopo, small other parties, young parties, and also other civic organizations. And we have seven organizations in Limpopo that we have partnered with that are under us as an umbrella of Forum for Service Delivery. We have Mangawong in Free State, uh, Mangawong organization also. We have TTA in Gauteng. So we have 10 presidents in Forum for Service Delivery mm -hmm. who are led by one president called Dr. Mbahari Kekan. So already we have started what we call an engagement before we actually get married. So we are ready for coalition talks and we are hoping that we'll be kingmakers in terms of coalition talks because mm -hmm. one of the most important thing after the election is who you actually now get married to because you must look at principles, you must look at ethics, which is something we are lacking in this country. We are lacking ethical leaders. We are lacking leaders who are not accountable and those are the things that we must look at. But definitely we are um, going to do coalition. So in your view, do you think that, uh, you know, uh, coalitions are the way to go now. I mean, they, I mean, we've seen what's been happening in the city of Johannesburg, in the city of Tswane, sure. in Ekuruleni. Uh, you know, this chopping, changing of people, and obviously it is destabilizing service delivery somewhere, it's, somehow. And that's why as an organization, we are calling for regulation of coalition. They must be regulated, otherwise we'll be dealing with uh, organizations that have tantrums like before that will just pull out because they are crying for something minor. So we might we must have regulations but even while we are fighting for regulations in parliament the the organizations that we will be doing collision with we must have agreements um, before we actually conclude anything else. Very interesting point there uh, you know we'll come to think of it I, I also saw a few weeks ago uh, the uh, Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, uh, Tembin Kadime, signing a bill to regulate the emotions of, of, of no confidence, sure. uh, which is something that we'll be able uh, to see unfolding as uh, you know we are heading to the next administration. There. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue the conversation. Do still this. Welcome back. You're still watching. So it's today. Much appreciated for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwane. Now tonight we're joined in studio by Nongo Solo, who is the Commissar for the Forum for Service Delivery there. Uh, she joins us in studio this evening to talk about uh, the party's campaign ahead of the 2024 general elections, which are scheduled on the 29th of May, which is almost 30 days uh, uh, you, you know, time has really <laughs> flown, <laughs> if I may put it that way. So I, I want us to talk about uh, your manifesto as um, uh, uh, for, I mean, F4SD. Um, I, I know that uh, you, you guys have, you know, spoken more about student issues and stuff. Yes. But before we get into that, um, what are your key priorities as, a, as an organization? Our key priority remains to be education. Uh, our key priority is electoral reform. Our key priority is um, land issues and migration issues. So when we speak about education, we are not speaking about schooling system. Because you would understand that in South Africa, we only have a schooling system. We don't have an education system. You, people are just schooled from one grade to another. They spend 13 years doing nothing because after that you have no skill. You yeah. can only articulate in English and other languages. And so that's our key priority. And when we speak of education, we started from ECDs because that's where you must nurture a young kid. But we also believe in integration. We are happy that ECD is now integrated with primary schools, but it must be further integrated. High school must be integrated with a higher learning institution so that there is a cohesion and transition because you would understand that you will pass metric, your certificate will say bachelor's qualification. But when you get to, to university, you won't even qualify for that. It's important that we also change the electoral reform, like I explained before, so that the independent candidates are not just included. They are not just accommodated, but the inclusion is, is, is quite fair, both for the political parties as for, and for independent yeah. candidates. So we are going to focus on that when we, we get to parliament. But also we must make sure that when we talk about land distribution, we don't just talk about land distribution in the hands of the state, because you would know that in the hands of the state, it belongs to politicians. We must talk about land distribution in the hands of, of people that people must own land, people must be able to occupy that land. That is why in our manifesto pillar, when we talk about housing, we are not saying we're just gonna build houses. We are saying there will be an alternative of a voucher of 200,000 so that as a human being, because the land belongs to you, you are able to design a house of your choice. 
Mm. I, I, I mean, I want to go back to uh, the, um, uh, you know, the issue of the Electoral Amendment Act. I mean, particularly looking at how, um, you know, it has been um, designed to accommodate uh, the independent candidates. We know that they are contesting only 200 seats. Sure. Um, and obviously the other seats are going to go to the political parties, but political parties can contest for the Fun. 400. Exactly. So um, it, it, do you think it's a bit unfair or it was just, you know, a rushed process, if I may put it that It's way. not a bit unfair, it's completely unfair. Mm. And even from the process when it started, when it was still an electoral bill before it became an act, the transparency process of it was completely unfair also. And that's the problem we have with our leaders in the country. Number one, they want to make laws without consulting the citizens. They want to put things in the country without consulting the citizens. So we need to be transparent enough. When we run the bill, I remember, we will only find EFF people bust in, DA people bust in, yeah. and they are only reading uh, speeches that are written by the party. And it's not well advertised for common citizens to come and actually contribute to the bill. So that is why you will find that it's completely unfair because the people who contributed are the organizations that are already in parliament and don't want to be distracted. They want to occupy those seats alone and they don't want to be fair to other independent candidates. And so the, the, the electoral act remains to be unconstitutional because as I speak to you, not only ind independent candidates are occupying the 200 seats yeah. out of the 400, but it simply says also, if I were to run as an independent and I'm ambitious to be a minister or a president for that matter, and I get the highest votes out of all the political parties, I will still get one seat and the rest of the votes mm -hmm. will be discarded. That is very unconstitutional because we are discard discarding votes of humans who have a right to vote, whose votes must be calculated. So there's a lot that has to be done, but what it needs, it needs forums for service delivery and other young organizations to come into parliament and begin to change those acts because obviously it's clear that the politicians that are in parliament have no interest to change it. Okay, now I want us to go back to the issues of service delivery. I mean, Northwest province is plagued by a lot corruption, fraud, the municipalities there are just running amok. Uh, you know, from Madibeng municipality to, you know, Ditsobotla to even Mahikeng. Um, it's, it's, it's just a mess in the Northwest province. Uh, you look at Limpopo province, there are projects that are uh, not completed there. The Guiani water project has been uh, there for quite some time now. Uh, 10 billion rands just went into uh, waste and then it's been over 15 years now. You go to the Free State Province, uh, the roads there are a mess. The uh, municipality there, uh, it's, it's you know, municipalities there are just, you know, um, there's, there's no proper governance, if I may put it that sure. way. How do you plan on tackling that as um, uh, an organization? True, what we are highlighting is happening in almost all the provinces. Uh, like I said, we don't have ethical, responsible leadership. And I think that's the first thing. Number one, as Forum for Service Delivery, we should ensure that we have transparent, good governance. That is to ensure that we handle our, our economics very well, our finances very well. Because you will remember that even in this Oboe, people, even the staff, the permanent staff that work there, they, they were not paid. When we got there, we found debts, not just a zero account, yeah. but a deficit. So that tells you that they are not only just eating, but they are eating even uh, f from the future of our country. So we need to ensure that as Forum for Service Delivery, we tackle the issue of good governance, transparent governance, but also we ensure that the education that we feed our students, the education that we feed the youth, is in preparation for future leaders. Because the worst leader you can ever find is not the leader that just steals, but the leader that steals from the next generation. And so we need to ensure also that we cut out cater deployment. Because it is cater deployment actually that makes all this mess in our municipalities. Because I need to pay my friend. I must know yeah. a person who knows a person who knows another person to get a tender. So we must get away with cater deployment. As Forum for Service Delivery, we are led by a doctor who is a professional, who is ethical. So we are coming not only just as an organization, but as professionals and academics who must ensure that even the people that we employ are qualified and not just cater deployments. No, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we wrap up the conversation. I just want to hear, uh, you know, your preparations as we are heading to the elections. How ready are you as a political party? Let's take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. 
Welcome back. You're still watching So It Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show. And I've been in conversation with Nongo Solo, who is the uh, student uh, uh, commissar there at the Forum for Service Delivery Political Party, talking to us about some of the plans the party has for South Africans, should it be given a chance to, you know, uh, to, 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 to govern. Uh, the province and the country in in general. Then Nongo is still my guest this evening. Nongo, um, as we wrap up the conversation, um, you know, higher education is a mess. Um, you know, NSFAS has had its own fair share of problems. Uh, you know, some people are saying we're seeing a bit of stability there, but, you know, <laughs> Uh, some people are actually not agreeing with that, especially student organizations uh, and, and stuff. What's your overall view of the state of higher education in the country? What do you think is going on uh, that is wrong, yes. uh, you know, uh, with NSWAS in its entirety and D, D head? As student forum for service delivery, we've always been clear that um, NSWAS must be scrapped, NSWAS must be discontinued because it's very dysfunctional. Um, what is happening in higher education, and I'll make an example from years back. You must remember that student um, fees must fall started because of the failure of NSFAS. Yeah. But even way before fees must fall, there was already an issue with NSFAS. What happens is that NSFAS is a, is, a, is a middle body that actually handles the finances of the students. But ever since it started, it hasn't been functional. We are at a point where it is actually regressing now. And all that we are seeing is just mediocre, it's just political game. Yeah. And it's so sad that uh, the, the Minister of Higher Education is prepared to gamble with the future of, of our young people. Uh, and we must be clear as Student Forum for Service Delivery that it can't be business as usual, when our students in higher learning are sleeping on halls, sleeping in libraries, when they are not receiving their, their allowances. I will want to break down statistics with you that plus minus 62 billion was issued out for financial year this year for all the students. Now every year, the NESFAS is funding plus minus million beneficiaries. Now if you do your quick mathematics, you will discover that it means that each and every beneficiary can receive 62,000. Now, if each and every beneficiary can receive 62,000, what is happening with the money? Because we know that money doesn't get lost. Mm. Money get, gets eaten. And, and it's been clear that the NESFAS has been doing it for years. But the logic behind scrapping NESFAS is that when you have a middleman, you are likely to spend high m amount of money on operational costs. Yeah. You are likely to spend high amount of money on rent. You are, highly to, you are gonna spend high amount of money on wages. The CEO of NESFAS alone is, is earning over a million per annum. NESFAS doesn't own buildings. It rents out buildings. So already that money, when we give you 62 billion, you are already taking out money out of the kids' uh, coffers. So do you think if the ANC retains its position as the ruling uh, party, do you think that uh, the, uh, Dr. Bladen Zimande should return as the minister? I can tell you now, ANC is not retaining their position as government. Minister Plain Demande is, will not be called Minister Plain Demande after 29 May because we're going to make sure that people are voting and they are voting for change. But what is, more, what is more important is that people understand that no matter how much you change ministers, it's the system that you must deal yeah. with, which is the system of NSFAS that we must completely cut out. So that is very important. And that is just only a start because there's a lot going on in higher learning institutions. But what we are proposing is the transition, it's the same method that we are using at basic education. In basic education, money moves from treasury, from department, into the school. So when I go to Nigel High School, Nigel High School knows that no one is coming, that Tabo is coming, we already have them, we have admitted them, we have accepted them. And by virtue of having 1,000 students, the government knows how much money to move to mm. Nigel High School to pay for my fees, to pay for my food, to pay for my transport. And that's the same method that must be used. But let's check the governance structure that is being used yeah. also in basic education. When you go to Nigel High, you will find what we call an SMT, which is more like a board of the school. Yeah. A student is there, a teacher is there, the principal is there. So all stakeholders, the parent is there, 
all stakeholders are represented. And that is why it's difficult for high schools, even though there is, it's difficult for them to corrupt money because all the stakeholders that are, that are interested in education are there. And that's the same method that they, they must adopt for higher learning institution. If I go to VITS, money must move from treasury straight to VITS, and the board of VITS must be inclusive of the SRC, the students, of the parents, of the, and all the stakeholders, of the vice chancellor and other lecturers, so that we monitor the finances. Now, in the interest of time, as we wrap up the conversation, um, what happens now? Or, you know, what are your plans moving forward? We are heading to the elections. Obviously, you guys are on the ground. Uh, how have you been received by communities there? And what would be the message that you want to give to, uh, you know, South Africans out there? I heard you saying if we come into government, we are already governing as yeah. Forum for Service Delivery. We are governing in many, many municipalities. But most importantly, we are governing a student Forum for Service Delivery in higher learning institutions. We are trendsetters, by the way. We are the first student forum organization to say NESFAS must be scrapped. We have already made blind demand to Dent in each and every speech that he speaks. He speaks about us. NESFAS can't be scrapped. But he will swallow his words very soon. And we are not only doing that. We are also practical in what kind of education South Africa must give. So we are giving them an example. We are saying they don't even have to study that because they are not interested in yeah. reading and in, in getting new information. They must just look at our model. We are running code boot camp, boot, boot camp codes where we are teaching young people how to do coding. We are running an institution where we are teaching uh, young people how to do web designing, graphic designing, agriculture. Those are the things that we are already doing as Student Forum for Service Delivery. So we are not waiting to be in government. We are governing already. We understand the power we have and we are using it. All now we need is much more resources and that is why we have to enter into parliament. Since fees must fall, all the young people that went to parliament belonging to all those political parties, not even one of them has pulled a motion of free, quality, decolonized education. And you ask yourself, what happened? So you'll know that these political parties are baptizing our young people. So as Student Forum for Service Delivery, we are, we are sober-minded, we are raw to say by the time we get to parliament, we must um, put a motion of free, quality, decolonized education. And the first thing to do is to scrap NESFAS. But it's important that we also make sure that the issue of agriculture comes into the land issue, because you can't always um, not produce what you are eating. Those are basic things that we must ensure that people enjoy in our society. So um, the citizens of the country must know that uh, the ANC is not coming back. The especially ANC, young people. Especially young people. The ANC is Humpty Dumpty. I, I think we all know that song. It fell from the wall, hit on the ground, it broke. Even when they called the king horses and the big people to come and fix Humpty Dumpty, they couldn't fix it. And that's ANC. It's broken. It, it, it's corrupted. Its time has come to an end, and where it belongs now is in the museum. No one can put it back together again. No, good, much appreciated. I wish we had more time, but uh, thanks for coming. That was very insightful. Uh, you heard it from her that, uh, you know, saying that, look, um, people need to go out there and uh, cast their votes, especially young people. And as we know that, uh, you know, there's been concerns that young people normally during elections uh, do not go out, but much appreciated for coming in and uh, joining us. Oh, thank you so much. There was uh, Nongo Solo, who is the Commissar there for the Student Forum for Service Delivery Political Party, talking to us about the state of readiness of the party ahead of the elections, as well as giving us a picture of what the party has done so far for South Africans at local level, and uh, also, you know, just shifting uh, the parameters in different parts of uh, the country there. Uh, well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of uh, Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Or you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081 From myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, it's good night from us and thank you for watching.